our video blog this week. We're in the Byward Market. We're meeting with Ottawa Markets, and we're meeting with Jill Savage. A few months ago, we met with uh, with Jill Savage to get an update on the Byward Market Public Spaces Report that's coming to Council this fall. We're going to get an understanding of how Ottawa Markets is uh, coping during the reopening phases, how the city's plan for reopening of businesses in the Byward Market, safe spaces at the same time, and how that might influence the public realm plan going forward. Let's meet with Zach from Ottawa Markets. So I'm glad to be joined by Zach, who's uh, the head of uh, Ottawa Markets. As you know, Ottawa Markets is a, a partner with the city in uh, all of the retail space and outdoor programming. Zach, how are you this morning? Good. I'm excited to be outside. It's a beautiful day, and we have some vendors setting up, so it's uh, it's going to be a good one. You know, in the market, I like to, I love to come in the market anytime, especially in the morning when everything's getting set up. There's deliveries, doors are opening. There, there's that ener that morning energy. Uh, how have you found the role? Obviously. Uh, you're in charge of Ottawa Markets, which I have, I'm biased obviously to the Byron Market, but is also responsible to Park Parkdale. How's been the first uh, few months uh, on the game? Uh, it's been great, obviously, with COVID. We've had to uh, rethink a lot of things. Um, but I think the future is, is bright for the market. Uh, there's uh, a lot of exciting activities going on from the road closures, where we've got some patios happening, to coming back to William Street, where we've got a number of art projects going on to beautify the space. Uh, and again, you know, there's the, the reality of COVID, um, but it's great to see the community out walking about uh, and taking in the space. We've got to encourage everybody to continue doing that and continuing to shop local, but it's, it's good. The first few months on the job, you couldn't have imagined, I guess, you know, in some ways, the, the chaos that COVID brought, but also some of the, the opportunities. Do you want to give us a sense of what you what, what your first few months have been and, and specifically now the reopening um, within the COVID period? Certainly. So it, it's obviously been a challenge. We were able to come up with uh, some creative ideas to keep the market going with our online market that we... The click and collect. The click and collect, absolutely. Um, that sort of slowed down as the markets began to reopen. Um, but one of the biggest challenges that we've, fe we've sort of seen is whether it be sort of a farmer or a producer retiring uh, or people not coming out for COVID, um, we've had sort of a slow start to folks getting going. But as the summer is going on and as people are sort of seeing uh, residents come out and a little bit more of that domestic tourism coming back, uh, they're, they're opening up. And so I think as we move forward, even into the next season, I think we have a really good platform to build from, especially because the city's got the uh, exciting public realm plan that's coming out. Um, so again, I, I go back to the idea of it may seem like things are a bit challenged and, and maybe even slow right now, but I think that's the process of changing really awesome spot for, for Byward. Are all the businesses now able to operate under uh, the phase two real? They are able to operate within some capacity. Um, so again, if you're headed out there, make sure that you just double check uh, or call ahead, because some places are doing lineups, some places are doing book by appointment, but we're getting back to that place where everybody's figuring out how they can open and how they can get you what you need. So we were just with Ottawa Markets, and as I said, we're meeting with Jill Savage. We met with Jill a few weeks ago. Thanks for joining us again. Last time we were on Zoom. Yeah. It was kind of the start of, or the midpoint of COVID. Uh, I'd say like sometime in April, we the, the city was proceeding with uh, the consultation around um, the report that was released and, and the amazing content that you and the team and the consultants were working on. Well, we're going to get back to it, but now we find ourselves in the market. Yeah. Uh, a number of months later, we're in mid-July. Um, we, we see all these spaces that were created uh, to respond to the business reopening. Uh, having been in the area and, and, and analyzing it for some time, uh, what do you see as opportunities through this period if that, that line up with uh, the goals of the plan? Uh, I mean, it's first of all, it's fantastic to be back on the ground, so to speak, so it's, uh, it's nice to come and talk to you here today. Um, the, the, this situation with the, the COVID um, economic recovery plan enables us to try out and test a few of the uh, principles of the plan. And one of those is to create more space for pedestrians. Um, if you come down here today, you'll notice that we've reintroduced the William Pilot Project uh, this season, which is uh, um, closing a segment of William to cars again between York and George. And that, that it creates more space for people to linger, relax, and safely physical distance from one another. We have chairs set up. And, and, and 
and that's uh, that's something that we we want we carried forward from last season with closures of Byward Market Square behind us and Clarence and York Street. We we get to create a wider promenade or wider space for people to make their connections on foot and also to stop um, on a patio um, that that sort of are now out and, and slowly rolling out more and more. Obviously, you know, seeing the layout of the street and the sidewalks, uh, how do you see that uh, being uh, an, a risk element? Because I, I think now, like, if we look behind us byward, you see so much space in where the asphalt is for the pedestrian, and yet the, the patio has not been able to expand. So how do you see that uh, being uh, an opportunity within the existing, existing setting? Right, so, I mean, we have noticed some challenges uh, with fitting in those uh, ultimate principles into a context, uh, today's context. And so uh, among those challenges would be um, adaptable spaces and flexible spaces are important. They are responsive to what the community needs, what the, what the businesses want. You can see though with um, uh, traffic being some um, sort of like the curb lines really do create barriers for an easy opening and closing yeah. of roads. We need to see some more signalization in certain intersections in in the market in general to really kind of facilitate a safe and predictable ease of movement of all modes of travel.